I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. Deep within the shadowy embrace of Silverwood's ancient forest, under the luminous gaze of the full moon, a profound and unsettling transformation unfolded. Michael, a resident of the small town adjacent to the sprawling wilderness, felt an all-consuming pain rack his body as the moon reached its zenith. The change was upon him once more, an agonizing metamorphosis that stripped away his humanity layer by layer until only the beast remained. The curse had found him months ago, on a night much like this one, when the whispers of the dark woods had become too insistent to ignore. He had wandered too deep, too recklessly, and the ancient curse that lurked in the heart of Silverwood had ensnared him. Now, he was part of the legend, the Silverwood beast that parents whispered about to frighten their children into obedience. As his bones shifted and his skin stretched, Michael's human thoughts began to dim, overshadowed by a more primal instinct. The pain of transformation gave way to a powerful surge of senses newly heightened. The scent of the damp earth rich and pungent. The sounds of the nocturnal creatures scuttling in the underbrush. The cool night air invigorating on his now thickly furred skin. With the transformation complete, he stood on powerful legs, his senses fully attuned to the night. The beast was in control now, driven by an insatiable hunger and a deep, unrelenting rage. The curse not only robbed him of his human form, but also filled him with a voracious anger that seemed to stem from the very soil of Silverwood. Tonight, however, there was a new sensation, a piercing awareness that something was different. Amidst the usual clarity of the night's smells and sounds, there was a new scent on the wind, one that stirred a curious anxiety in the beast's mind. Intruders. Human intruders their scent laced with a familiar dread and determination. Driven by a mix of curiosity and a territorial imperative, the beast moved silently through the undergrowth, its massive form surprisingly agile. The moonlit path led him closer to the source of the intrusion, to the old mill, the heart of many local legends and a place he instinctively avoided during his transformations. But tonight, the pull was too strong the scent of the intruders, too intriguing. As he neared the mill, he saw them. Two figures, armed, cautious, their bodies tense as they scanned the darkness. Memories of his human life flickered in the beast's mind, recognition sparking briefly. Jacob and Elias, known to him once as friends, now nothing more than threats to be neutralized. Hiding in the shadow of the trees, the beast watched, its deep growls muted as it observed. The men were setting something up, their actions deliberate. Traps, the beast's instincts screamed, a danger it understood even in this cursed form. The beast circled around, looking for an angle of approach that kept the wind in its favor, masking its scent and sounds. Its eyes, reflective and intense, never left the figures of the two men, watching as they tested the tension on a silver net. Silver. A searing pain, and a weakness the beast remembered all too painfully. The standoff continued, the men unaware of the beast's presence. It was then that the beast made a decision, a plan formulated by the remnants of Michael's strategic mind melded with the animal's instincts. It would strike, swift and hard, a calculated risk to scare off the intruders, to reclaim its territory. As the beast prepared to leap, a distant howl echoed through the forest, a sound that froze the night air, another of its kind, the call unmistakable. The Silverwood curse was not his burden alone to bear. Reinforcements were coming, their howls a chorus that grew in intensity. The night was far from over, and as the beast tensed, ready to make its presence known, it understood that the confrontation at the old mill would mark a turning point. Silverwood's secrets were deep, and the night promised to reveal more than any of them could have anticipated. The battle lines were drawn under the watchful eyes of the moon, and the forest held its breath, waiting for the clash of human and supernatural that was about to unfold. As the distant howls grew closer, stirring a primal rally in the night, the beast readied itself. Each muscle tensed for the impending confrontation, a powerful mix of man's strategy and animal instinct driving its actions. The old mill, bathed in moonlight, 
seemed to whisper echoes of forgotten stories, its dilapidated walls holding secrets of countless encounters between the townsfolk and the creatures of the woods. Jacob and Elias, unaware of the gathering storm of fur and fangs, continued their preparations. The beast observed them setting up more traps, the gleam of silver almost taunting in the moonlight. The metallic scent, mixed with the men's cautious sweat, filled the air, sharpening the beast's focus. It crouched lower, its eyes locked on its former friends, now prey in this deadly game dictated by the curse. The first of the other werewolves arrived, their forms ghostly shadows flitting through the trees. They were smaller, less formidable than the beast, yet their presence bolstered its courage. A low growl, almost a signal, passed between them, orchestrating their approach. They moved with a natural stealth, a pack united by the dark gift of the curse, circling the old mill, positioning themselves with an innate understanding of pack tactics. Elias paused, a shiver running down his spine as the forest around them seemed to come alive with ominous energy. Jacob, do you feel that? He whispered, his voice barely carrying over the rustle of leaves. Jacob, ever vigilant, nodded, his hand tightening around his rifle. He had felt the shift too. The night had changed, charged with a tension that presaged violence. Suddenly, a low, guttural snarl erupted from the shadows, the sound chillingly close. Jacob and Elias swung around, their lights piercing the darkness, catching the briefest glimpse of yellow eyes and matted fur before the shadows reclaimed their own. They're here, Jacob muttered, an edge of grim determination in his voice. The beast, using the distraction created by its pack, launched its attack. It burst from the underbrush, a terrifying specter of fur and rage, heading straight for the trap Elias had been setting. But this was no blind charge. It was a calculated move, designed to trigger the trap harmlessly with its speed and force. The silver net deployed with a metallic clang, missing its target by mere inches as the beast rolled to the side, its agility belying its massive form. Jacob fired, the shot echoing loudly, a miss that splintered the wood of an old mill post. The other werewolves, emboldened by the beast's boldness, began their assault, howls piercing the night as they converged on the mill. Elias reloaded, shooting blindly into the dark where the yellow eyes had flashed. A yelp told him he'd hit something, but there was no time to celebrate. The werewolves were upon them, and the night erupted into chaos. The beast, now close enough to see the resolve in Jacob's eyes, hesitated. In that brief moment of eye contact, a flicker of Michael's humanity shone through the feral exterior. Jacob paused too, recognition dawning, a heart-stopping pause in the fight. But the moment was shattered by a new howl, one that neither Jacob nor the beast had expected. This call was different, filled with a sorrow and desperation that tugged at the beast's rapidly fading human heart. It was a call for help, a plea that could not be ignored. Torn between the battle and the call, the beast made a split-second decision. Turning away from Jacob and Elias, it bounded off towards the source of the howl, its pack hesitating before following their leader into the dark, away from the old mill. The night swallowed them as they ran, the sounds of the skirmish at the mill fading behind them. Ahead, the unknown awaited, the howl guiding them deeper into the heart of Silverwood, where old secrets lay buried and new horrors were just beginning to stir. The story of the Silverwood beast was far from over. It was evolving, growing with each passing moment, as the forest closed in around them, hiding the path forward and the dangers it held. As the beast, leading its newly formed pack, raced through the dense underbrush, the cold air bit into its fur, carrying with it the faint, distressing howls that continued to echo through the woods. The moon, a silent observer, cast a ghostly light that barely penetrated the thick canopy, creating a labyrinth of shadow and silver light. The instinct to protect, to respond to the desperate plea embedded in the howl, drove the beast forward. Its powerful limbs moved with a grace and speed that belied its monstrous form, each stride eating up the ground as it navigated the familiar yet ominous terrain of Silverwood. The rest of the pack kept pace, their forms ghost-like as they darted between trees and over streams, their own fears subdued by the urgency of their Alpha's mission. The howls grew louder, more urgent, and the beast's sharp ears picked up another sound, a whimper, the soft sound of struggle. Slowing its approach, the beast signaled its pack to fan out, approaching the source of the sound with caution. 
The undergrowth ahead rustled softly, and the smell of blood and fear hit them strongly. Breaking through into a small clearing, the beast came upon a shocking scene. A younger werewolf, one not fully transformed and caught in the painful in-between, was trapped under a fallen tree. Its leg was twisted unnaturally, and the sharp smell of its blood was overwhelming. This was the source of the desperate calls. The young werewolf, eyes wide with pain and fear, whimpered again as it saw the beast and its pack. The beast approached slowly, its demeanor changing from the leader of the pack to a protector. The other werewolves circled around, sniffing the air and growling softly, but they made no move to approach the injured youth. With a gentle nudge of its head, the beast signaled them to keep their distance. Kneeling beside the young werewolf, the beast used its massive head and shoulders to carefully lift the tree enough to alleviate the pressure on the injured leg. The young werewolf whined, its eyes glazing with pain. Using its powerful jaws, the beast then carefully grabbed the fabric of the young one's torn shirt, gently dragging it away from the danger of the fallen tree and into the open space of the clearing. Once free, the beast turned to the pack, issuing a low, commanding growl that had them instantly lying down, submitting to their alpha's authority. The beast then turned back to the injured werewolf, using its nose to nudge and comfort the young one. The ordeal was not yet over. The young werewolf's injuries were severe, and without human intervention, it might not survive. The beast, sensing this, let out a long, mournful howl into the night. A call that was not just a communication, but a plea for help that transcended the boundaries of their cursed existence. As the howl faded into the night, the sounds of the forest responded. In the distance, the faint sound of a vehicle approached. The humans were coming, likely alerted by the unusual noises or perhaps by the instinctive understanding that something was amiss in their beloved Silverwood. The beast stood guard over the young werewolf, its form a formidable silhouette against the moonlit night. The arrival of the humans would be the next challenge, would they help, or would they see only the monsters before them? The beast knew the risks, but also knew there was no choice. The life of the young werewolf depended on what would happen next. As the sounds of human voices and the crunch of gravel under tires grew louder, the beast and its pack remained still, the only movement the steam of their breath in the cold night air. The story of the Silverwood Beast was far from over, Indeed, it was weaving a new chapter that night, one that might change the fate of all who dwelled within the shadowed woods. The sounds of the approaching vehicle grew louder, its headlights eventually piercing through the dense foliage, casting long shadows across the clearing. The humans disembarked, their voices cautious but urgent, carrying medical and trapping equipment. Among them was Jacob, his face etched with concern and resolve, recognizing the monstrous silhouette of the beast as the guardian of the young werewolf. The beast watched intently as Jacob approached slowly, his hands raised to show he was unarmed, his eyes not leaving those of the beast. We're here to help, Jacob called out, his voice steady despite the palpable tension. The beast, understanding the intent if not the words, gave a low growl that was both a warning and a reluctant grant of permission. It stepped back slightly, allowing the humans more space to tend to the injured young werewolf. The medical team worked quickly, administering pain relief and setting the twisted leg, while Jacob kept his eyes on the beast, aware of the delicate balance of trust and fear between them. As the team stabilized the young werewolf, preparing to transport him for further treatment, the atmosphere in the clearing was cautiously optimistic. Perhaps this night would end with a bridge built between the human and supernatural inhabitants of Silverwood. However, the forest, as if resentful of the intrusion, began to stir. The wind picked up, whispering through the trees, carrying a warning. The beast's ears twitched and its nostrils flared, scenting something beyond the human smells of oil and sweat. It was then that the tranquility shattered. From the depths of the forest, multiple howls rose, not in pain, but in aggression. New, unfamiliar werewolves, drawn by the commotion and the scent of blood, emerged from the shadows, their eyes red with the hunger of the hunt. These were not part of the beast's pack, but rogues, drawn to the territory by the chaos of the night. Jacob and his team, sensing the sudden danger, froze. The medical team tried to hurry their work, but as the rogue werewolves approached, snarling and ready to attack, the situation escalated rapidly. Jacob, reaching for a tranquilizer gun, managed to shoot one, but there were too many. 
The beast, torn between protecting the young werewolf and confronting the intruders, let out a ferocious roar and charged at the newcomers. A brutal fight ensued, teeth and claws flashing in the moonlight. The humans, realizing they were outmatched, retreated toward their vehicle, dragging the injured young werewolf with them. As the battle raged, the line between predator and protector blurred. The rogues were relentless, and soon the beast, despite its strength and fury, was overwhelmed. The last thing Jacob saw before the humans made it to their vehicle was the beast being brought down by the pack of rogues, its body disappearing under a mass of snarling dark fur. They drove away with the sounds of the ferocious battle echoing through the woods, the fate of the beast unknown, leaving behind a clearing that bore the scars of a night of terror. The forest closed in, the secrets of Silverwood deeper and darker than ever, as if the land itself mourned the fall of its fiercest protector. The terrifying reality was clear. Silverwood was no longer just haunted by a curse, but by a war between its cursed creatures, with boundaries drawn not just in the shadows, but in blood. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 